Hey, welcome to another episode of the Sugar Crave Show. I'm excited for today's guest. His name is Marcus Lorenzen. He directed a brand new music video for us uh, for Chess Game, and it came out fantastic. He's just a great, great director. Starting now, he's super, super young, and he just has such a unique eye for film, for life in general. He he has um, multiple um, films out, a documentary called London uh, Skate Culture, which is amazing. You got to go check that out as well. But um, in this interview, I really wanted to get that, that him personally out, not just beyond the the being a director, you know, him as an individual and, you know, just meeting him f months ago about this music video um i knew he was going to be great and i knew he i just trusted him so much it felt very comfortable with him and um i think in this interview it showcases that so yeah we're going straight it's raw baby <laughs> let, me, uh, let me let me get the camera going yeah yeah, yeah. yeah man. um no yeah so yeah it was a, it was exciting man for sure i mean I'd never done a music video before. I'd edited a couple of videos. I've, I started off editing music to clips on Instagram and like, I'm a big Liverpool fan. So that's how I really kind of got going in that. And then, so I was always used to kind of sync and enjoying that. And, um, and then I just really did film for a while. And then you hit me up to do this music video and I thought I kind of still had the capability to kind of you know, sync clips with music and kind of have a have a rhythm and a flow to it, which I think is really important in editing. You know, it's not, I think that's what kind of tells the story the best, the rhythm and the flow. And um, and I think that's what music videos are, are, are great for. So yeah, I think that's why it came out really well, because I think it was just kind of very organic in a way like that. It kind of, I had trained myself to do music videos without even knowing, or editing music videos at least. It took about a day and a half to edit. Um, and then my DP Coco came around and he graded it for two days, two and a half days. Um, and then, yeah, we basically did the credits the other day and that was, and then we just, and my designer just did the thumbnail and, um, we're here tomorrow. It's out. Crazy. It's exciting, man. Yeah. But around this time, this podcast will probably be out by the day of the release. So it's out today and, uh, man, I just like. It was awesome just seeing the whole year, just basically the outline. I don't know. Um, I forgot the name of it. What would you call it? Uh, kind of your, 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 like your storyboard. Yeah. Uh, treatment. Treatment. So yeah, mm -hmm. your treatment was like fantastic, man. Cause you, we can, at least for myself, I can see where you were going to go for where, like what type of shots, what kind of vibe you wanted to go for the overall feel of it. And I thought, I thought it was fantastic. Just seeing the clips of it, that demo of it. I was just like, holy shit. You know, Mark is definitely, definitely pulled through. It's funny. I thought you didn't like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought I was like, ah, he's not really on it. I remember we, uh, I sent it to Joe and I sent it to you at the same time. And, uh, cause I was waiting to like show Joe at the premiere. I was like, fuck it. I'll just, I'll just show Joe now. Yeah. And I sent it, bro, I've watched it four times. I fucking love it. This is amazing. Like, oh my God. And I said to you, like, yeah, man, I like it. It's, uh, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think uh, it's funny because a lot of people say that about me. Like, I, I work with artists and, like, for instance, they'll bring back the vocals and I'm like, oh, I dig it. And they're like, well, do you like it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I like it. I, I, you know, I have, it's it's uh, it's a shitty thing to have sometimes when you work with artists or, like, particular people like you that you, you like, I. it's funny because musically I can get emotional, Mm. when i'm in person i'm like i'm just like you know i'm like yeah that's great that's fantastic even in the session i'll do that shit but internally i'm excited as fuck dude it's just it's so weird i don't know why but i really did like it just um it just everything came out like it was like a what i love about it was a movie it wasn't like a music video it was like a movie but with music like scoring in the back that's why i loved yeah. about it i guess i guess that it kind of um i mean i haven't i haven't shot a crazy amount of stuff I, but i shot specific things um and i guess i've been a quick learner 
um, in that regard. Even though I'm, like, I'm terrible at like, uh, retaining information, I'm just oh, for some reason when I'm on set, <laughs> I, I, get, I get a knack for it. Um, and I guess, yeah, it kind of all came together. I've only shot, I've edited a couple of little short films, but I've only directed my first short film this year in June. And so I guess kind of I learned quickly of how to work with people, how to direct people, because I had only done documentaries before then. Right. And that we were kind of just run and gun. Let's just test our luck. Let's see what happens. And this time it was more, yeah, obviously uh, more choreographed. And I get, and then, and then, yeah. And I thought after shooting that, after, after finishing that short film, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not working until like September. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not going to do anything in film school. And then Joe popped up and I remember messaging Joe, I'm going, hey man, like, we should shoot a music video. And he's like, yeah, we should. Now, let, let, let me put you in a group chat right now. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, wing, you know, like thinking, yeah, it's going to come nothing over. He's like, yeah, we should. And I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> and then that day I was around, my friend came around and I was outside, we were outside having, having a smoke. And he said to me, um, you know, what are you up to? And I said, oh man, I think I've got this music video going in. I, I don't know what I've got myself into. I've never done a music video before. But then I kind of realized like you've never done a film before. You've never done a documentary before. So, and it all came out well. So why not just give this one uh, a shot? And, and then it came, yeah, it came together so fucking strangely well. And, and it's like, it's just one of those things that I've, I've kept seeing as a pattern recently in work where it just everything is kind of aligning it's like every step is generally a, a, a helpful like level up and it's going to it's like adding to something to the next project the project you're doing right now whatever you're working on right now is going to benefit the next project you know mm-hmm. um and i've seen that pattern and, and it's strange and it's also strange how just things come together like this this shoot was very very weird it was a very weird shoot it seemed um, like a fast shoot for you like preparation and kind of getting anything together yeah it was it was like i sum it up as like a blurry epileptic um psychedelic mess really. <laughs> it's strange man like i didn't it's yeah i don't know it's like i was like you have you have days where you think am i really am i am i doing the right thing is this really the path for me and then stuff like like shoots like these for example where they just come together and it's like organic like for example we didn't have basically when you brought me on i had no crew yet and i didn't really know where i was going to find one because i knew everyone was away on holiday mm-hmm. or i had just pissed off and past projects and i was like fuck okay i need to i need to gather something together quick um and i had none of the right gear either anyway so i went to joe's concert who he was performing like a couple like a month or maybe a month like a half a month before we were going to shoot and he said to me, um, you know, meet Daniela, meet this girl called Daniela, sure. So I met her and, she, and then she said, what are you working on? And I said, uh, oh, uh, you know, I, I'm doing a music video and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm looking for you know, people. It'd be great if you, could, if you could help me. And she goes, yeah, I know. I, I, have, I have a flatmate who, who's, a, who's a director of photography. He's a cinematographer. Okay. Really? Yeah, bring him on. And at that time I had brought this uh, girl on who was going to shoot the film, who, uh, shoot the video for me. Um, who's going to be the camera operator. So I was kind of like comfortable with like that. I, it was only me and her so far. And then, um, and then, yeah. And then, and then she, 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 she put me in contact with him and then, I, and then immediately on text and messaging him. And he said, uh, yeah, I'd, be, I'd love to come down. I'd love to, love to help out. And literally the day after he, he accepted the girl who was originally going to be in his place dropped out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fucking hell. Like imagine like if I didn't even go to that concert and meet that guy, she, I would have had, I would have no one. And then anyway, before that, I, I, had, I had shot a music video with a friend of mine. I was, a mo- I was like an actor for it. And uh, I met the director, who was the sister of the, of the singer who was, uh, was her music video. And uh, we were chatting through breaks. And I said, I'm, you know, uh, if, we ever work this, if we ever work on something, I would love to bring you on. And then I thought about this. I said, hey, would you love to come on as an AD? She said, sure. And then instantly two people and then, uh, and then, and then I asked Joe, uh, and then one more guy I met at the concert called uh, Manasseh. Um, he, uh, he, he, he said, I, I said, I just graduated film school. I said, brilliant. Want to come on as an AD? He said, sure. So by like in a space of like two, like even like two weeks or three weeks, I had a full crew from many different people <laughs> like around London. 
and I, I had I, I it was like the first time meeting them let alone working with them yeah. so it just came together so fast and so well yes. and to be honest about Coco man um the music video wouldn't really be what it is uh look wise um he he, he he smashed it and it was it was literally the first time really actually meeting him was when we we were doing the location wrecking at joe's house so it was like hi nice to meet you cool so how are we shooting this <laughs> <laughs> right out of the bat so no it, it, it seemed like yeah. you gr- you're puzzling everybody in so like yeah. so you basically came from just having yourself to now you have a full crew and now you're like, okay, nice to meet you. Let's get to work. Let's see what's your strengths and what's your weaknesses. And what's yeah. one thing that you learned the most from shooting this music video? Um, more organization probably. Uh, but also, I, I, for me, it's not, uh, yeah, yeah. I de- definitely learned that more organization for sure. But what I got more from this music video was that was already having the suspicion of just like sometimes go with the flow, you know, don't, you can prep something so much, but especially in this industry, it's going to like, it's probably going to fuck up and you have to, you have to, you know, quickly in, in, in a second fix it, especially on set. Um, so sometimes just go with the flow and, and hope for the best and don't, 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 you know, try and be precise as possible because it's not going to go the way you think it will. And shooting this has just made that philosophy of mine more stronger, that belief more stronger because it, it, it worked out, you know? Yeah. Especially if you have like a strong structure about it, right. You know, most shoots don't, you know, just as, you know, hearing from my wife, she usually says like, things don't go well. And, most of the time on shoots it's, it's it's you know it's sometimes planned out but they you know they try to get away from shots and if it's not working it's not working so but you know it seemed like you had your structure and you you just did well just by talking to joseph and just seeing the outcome of it and just seeing how you work with everybody i think you know it's great that you have that leadership and i think that's what made it the best is like you, with you, you had that leadership of working with other people and being flexible. Yeah, I guess it was, um, yeah. I mean, watching Kinsey, who was the AD, who was the director I met, uh, who was my first AD on the music video, but she was the director I met on the other music video. Um, just watching, it was her first time directing, just watching her patience with people. And she, she told me later on that she didn't really actually know what she was doing. <laughs> she didn't. <laughs> But from my standpoint, it seemed like she was just really patient. And so I kind of took that into account um, and learned from that. And to be honest, no one apart from probably Coco and me really knew what the fuck they were doing in a sense of like their job roles because everyone else was kind of either starting out or um, from Manasseh's standpoint, he was he was like more of a script writer. He didn't want to be an AD. Mm. Um, so, Yeah. Uh, he had to he had to learn on the job immediately, and so did Kinsey. Really. And it was just like pure just determination and like like motivation and excitement and just wanting to help. And I think the best thing I took away from this was it was the best testament of human generosity I've probably ever seen in the music in in, in ever in my life. Because we live in probably a world now, especially in the industries we're in, it's mm-hmm. always very competitive and don't step on my feet and you know for you sure. Know, stab you the second i get uh, a chance to in a sense but with this it was it was just completely different uh it was just we i, I met like 20 extras on the day and i had to say hey guys look i know you just want to get drunk and smoke and uh, party but kind of need you to do something and <laughs> kind of need you to work <laughs> you're not, the alcohol is not free you know fucking put in the work but like they were so just happy to and 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 like and obviously that's a testament to obviously joe's uh good taste and friends probably as well <clears throat> but it was just amazing man and they were just everyone at any point was happy to just drop what they were doing and help and they had they didn't even know me and they didn't need to owe me anything and they, and they weren't getting paid and and no one was actually getting paid but we just all wanted to help and it proved that sometimes it was just 
art is still alive and, and, and the appreciation to create art is still alive and it's not so money driven. I think that was, that was probably the most beautiful thing I learned. No, it, that, especially in those kind of environments, I think those are the best shoots when people are just starting out. Like think about it, at least for me as a standpoint, as a music producer from starting out as being a music producer till when I am now that drive when I was young to figure out shit and just like, you know, that bonding of other people, meeting other people that were just starting out with me. That was a whole def different, way different feeling that is now when I meet somebody that is at the same level and just like, oh, you expect it. But now yeah. you're like, oh, my God, I don't expect you being so caring and so genuine and stuff like that. So I I understand when it comes to like that whole feeling and it just it, i bet it was just fucking amazing man just to have people just be on your back ready yeah. to go it was like yeah it was it was um i think like coco said to me halfway through the shoot he said hey man like i understand why dps and directors have these massive fucking egos and like god complexes because you just order people around and i was like yeah i get what you mean but i think like that's probably not the right way to direct at all because the word director can come off as a, you know, a dictator. You technically are a dictator on set. Mm -hmm. I don't think that way to probably treat people um, that you want to work with and that you want to continue working with in the future. Um, there's, yeah, it's like, if you're under, if you're under stress and you have to get shit done and you're like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Sure. And hunt with that tone, then don't. But I mean, like then, like that's okay, you know, to a certain extent. But if it's just like kind of more relaxed, yeah, don't you don't need to push people around. Be a bit more, a bit more chill. No, I mean. definitely, especially in the environment itself, because like you know, I mean, come on, does do a lot of people like to get yelled at while working? No, most of people don't. Like some people don't work well with that pressure. So, no, man, I think um, it's it's best whatever makes you feel comfortable. But honestly, just being seeing people that are nicer they last way longer in the industry than someone that's a dickhead you know because what's going to happen you being that dickhead they're going to look at you 24 7 to see when you fuck up and when you fuck up it's going to be huge they're going to post it on the wall be like yeah this guy was a dick <laughs> now he's touching you know kids <laughs> you know what i mean you're in another hobby situation man. yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah he's like mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just another thing, I guess, I took away as well. And I've probably learned in the last, in, in this, just this summer alone, it's just, you just be friends with everyone, man. Just be, right. just be nice to everyone because you, you know, you, especially in this industry as well, you don't know when you, when you need some help and when you need, when you, when you, when you need a pal and you need some backup. Well, it's um, kind of hard to ask for help sometimes, you know, because of your ego. We all have egos. You know, and it's hard to be like, hey, can you do me a solid and help me out with this? I just started learning that like a couple of years ago to being, you know, bold and being like, hey, it's OK to ask people for help because, you know, the, it, the worst thing they say they do is they say no. Right. Um, but the outcome of, you know, they saying yes, it's way more. You know, what I mean, that's just like collaboration is everything. You can't get anything done about collaboration. You know, you're, you're, as Joe Strummer said, you're, you're nothing about people, man. And it's like the most truthful thing. You, you really aren't. And I think that was, again, again un, another example of this shoot. You really are nothing about people. Um, and if I didn't want to, if I was just, if I was just a snobby prick that was up my own ass and didn't really want to talk to anyone who I thought was below me, I would have never, you know, I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk to anyone. And then I would have never met anyone. <laughs> exactly. Being just me <laughs> and I, that nothing would have got done um, because I'm not a camera operator. You know, I'm not a cinema photographer, I'm a director, I'm an editor. That's my skill set. I need other people to help me in that regard and they need me to do their thing. Right. Um, and, and that's what, that's how it works. That's how it flows. You know, Joe's a singer. He's not a producer. You're a producer. You needed a singer. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's collaboration and that's, and that's what gets stuff done. You know, it's like, it, that, that's the best thing. That's, that's it's the key, helps. man. It's the key to your success, key to yeah. everything. Even like, you know, with your partner too, 
You know what I mean? You, you're working with your partner to make, you know, your guys' relationship work. You got to work with one another to figure out how it's going to work. And just, you know what I mean? It, uh, you know, no one goes through life by themselves, completely by themselves, right? They have to have a team. And it's just like, it's the crazy factor of that, that you need somebody. You can be like, oh, I don't need anybody. But in real life, to function, to work, you know, to go anywhere in your life, you have to be with somebody or collab with somebody you have some I'll do it a lot. You, and you can to a certain extent and that's why i mean you can but you're going to eventually burn out and you're not going to get the the final product that you wanted without someone else's help and i guess that's what else sort of like working on the short film and working on this music video it's like there's so many jobs where the small people are like treated as small people and they're just regarded and disregarded, sorry. And they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're not focused upon. And I think that's the shittest way to treat people. And I'd be in that situation with shitty nine to fives. And with the thing I've learned the most is that like, the little, <coughs> sorry, the little people in the film industry are probably the biggest people you can ever have because like you need ADs, you need runners, you need the people to get the coffees because you're not going to keep going. You need the people to order the foods. You need all those, like, it's not the directors and the editors and the, the DPs and, and you know, the script writers. It's like, yes, th those those people can, the, uh, can, can, can make up something great, but they're never going to get as far or, or, or complete it without those other people. And those people are as, as important as the, as the top dogs. And... Um, and I guess that's why, yeah, you have to treat everyone really with, with respect because you wouldn't be getting it done without, you know, like Joe was, Joe was the musician, but he was running up and down getting coffees, you know, and just like, <laughs> you should just been sitting down VIP, you know, in yeah. his trailer, not doing fuck all. Joe is so fucking nice, man. I feel like I feel like Joe. I love Joe, but I feel like he's too nice sometimes, and just like it's like you know, it's he's like, like bro, he's like evil, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so, there has to be something he's, he's, like, he's got he's got some skeletons in his closet. <laughs> a lot of time, man. There's something. There's something he did in his past, but yeah, he was just running up and I I I, I drank like five coffees he made. And he's like, do you want it ice? Do you want milk? Like. You know, and then we had another friend called Daniela who was just purely there to just be an extra, nothing else. And she was happily grabbing the, you know, the light diffuser and just fucking holding a light stand when you needed to. And we had a shot. There's a pull out shot in the in the music video before the first drop mm -hmm. where they're both sit where Freya, uh, where Freya and Joe are sitting at the table. And we pull it out. And we're using a trolley, and it's five a.m. And it's just, it's, it was we're, we're pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it out. And we wanted to turn off all the, we had three RGB lights, we wanted to turn them all off at the same time and turn the spotlight on. And we couldn't get it done because one of the RGB lights were out of sync with, it, with two others. And we okay. flipped them one more second than possible, which would disturb the spotlight and the effect. And I had a friend upstairs called Jamal, who was sleeping. And I said, so I had to run upstairs. <laughs> and I had to go, hey man, hey man. He's like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was like, look, I don't need to be an extra. I just need you to turn on a light. Okay, uh -huh. just need you to flick on a switch. He's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, I just need you to flick on a switch. Don't ask questions. Come downstairs. <laughs> Get your ass downstairs. It was 5 a.m. Imagine getting woken up at 5 a.m. to flick on a switch. Yeah, I'd be fucking pissed. Yeah, <laughs> so he comes downstairs and I grab another guy called Sydney and I think one of other Joe's flatmates and, and that seemed to hold the spotlight to turn it on at the same time. And I, so I had basically uh, four or five people monitoring lights manually to turn them off and then have one person to turn it, uh, turn the spotlight on. So it was like, we'd pull out, pull out, pull out, pull out. And Jamal came downstairs. He was holding on. I said, are you guys, are you ready? Everyone's positioned. They had their thumbs ready, mm -hmm. holding it up. And I said, Can I three, two, one. And I said, off. And then when every, four of the people turned it off, Nassim turned the spotlight on and we got the shot. And all, all while that was happening, my second AD, Manasse was just down on the left side of the floor, holding this dot, like literally lying down, holding this dodgy like <laughs> lamp that was gonna lying there for sort of 30 minutes. And he was like, guys, I think we should wrap it up. I'm like, no, <laughs> no we gotta go, we gotta do another one. Right. I mean, like Stanley Kubrick, like we gotta do another one. But it was just like, it was just such a cool effort, man. 
and like those those memories are just are just great and i think when you have big budget films you kind of lose that that fun of it because everything's done for you you have the equipment to get it done you're not right. going trolley from marks and spencers at like 4 a.m to get a pull out shot you know you're going to use a slider on a professional film um you know that it was just it, it was beautiful it was a lot of fun man you guys really did fun. an awesome fucking job man honestly like we would have to i you know once I get over there, we're, we're all going to have to go to dinner together because I just can't thank you guys enough for how much, at least for you, just how much effort you put into the work and how dedicated you were and just very, you know, consistent and just like, it blew my mind, you know, ever since I kind of, I was looking up your stuff and I was just like, man, like, I can imagine how this is going to outcome because I was a big fan just from the London state, you know, skate culture video. I was like blown away by how that was produced and all that. Um, that was amazing. Can you talk a little bit about that and like how that started or what was your idea when you first created that? Yeah, I don't know. I was, um, I feel like I've spoken about this so many times cause I just, I, I'm really, really fucking proud of the project. Um, but yeah, we shot it at, we shot it in November, December, 2020. And it was a school project. Uh, at the time, I was working in I was working for this freelance media company, so I really wasn't paying attention uh, mm -hmm. to, to the school thing. And and we were quite like it was like the, like the week before we had to like think of our idea. I was studying creative media for a while. It was like kind of my equivalent of my A levels, um, which is like SATs here in America. Mm -hmm. And. Um, so it was like a week before we had to like hand like our idea and treatment in and we're sitting around and my friend like started dressing up kind of like as a TikTok skater boy. So I was like poking fun at him and I have curtains and he has curtains. So we're kind of taking the piss out of ourselves. And then we kind of like, we went on to the kind of idea of it's really interesting how skateboarding has evolved now and it's becoming this really, I mean, it's always been cool and it's always been a trend, but it's really got very more, mainstream and I guess publicized and the old the kind of the stereotypes of skaters being you know uh seen as like stoners and lazy and dropouts and and, it, and you know just idiots I thought that was like very interesting how you had a ton of so-called social rejects in like a you know a, kind of a, a big circle skate park right metaphorical circle mm -hmm. skate park and they're, they're labeled lazy. And I was like, okay, well, I want to kind of go out and see the skater behind the board. You know, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to really see that. Cause I didn't know much about skating. I, I live in Notting Hill, but like, and there's a skate park down the road and I see a ton of skaters and I'm surrounded by that. But I never had, I never really paid attention to it. I was always, I always also a bit intimidated when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I know I kind of thought I was like, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't cool enough or I didn't really want to go down and, and, and because I, I think skate, skate parks are also seen as like really intimidating and like very rough and like dirty and like rebellious and like punk. And it is, but what you find is, and I think that's what we really done really well in the documentary. And I'm really proud of how we, how we approached that was we, we, we showed this other side, this side that's not really, I guess, known or maybe not known, but like, uh seen as much um and we wanted to break the stereotype and what we, what you see in the documentary is just like everyone is so fucking nice and everyone is so lovely and kind. oh it's it's a great after i watched that i was just like your whole stereotypes of skaters it, yeah. it's gone it's just, it's not it, it honestly, honestly seemed like a whole family of like no, you it know. is and that's the thing it, it's it's such a family, man. And and what you see in the documentary is really what we experienced as well. Because we went down there, we had nothing planned. It was it's quite magical in that sense, because we had nothing planned. Again, it was like such a wing it. I did not really care if this was gonna fail or succeed. I was kind of doing it just to get, get hit a tick. And then literally over time, I think after our first skate park, which was in North Acton, close to uh, our college, um, we went down there and literally approached like four or five skaters and they were like yeah sure let's do it you know let's just let's shoot and so we mic them up 
put the camera on a tripod and shot. And what you literally get in the documentary is was just that. It was ne- nothing was rehearsed. Nothing was like, can you can you approach it like this? Nothing was like edited to seem like there was a certain narrative. It was just what the answers are given in the documentary is amazing. And I think Billy, who um, Billy Harnett, uh, who's one of the skaters we we interviewed at South Bank, who's like what's quite like a uh, pop culture big skate park in London. Um, his ending quote, well, it wasn't his ending quote, but I made it his ending quote. Um, it's just fucking amazing. And I, I think it, it goes like, you know, um, you know, uh, skateboarders are labeled as, as, as lazy and stoners and, and idiots, but really, you know, I just, I love skating on a plank of wood with four wheels. That's my passion. And I think that really just sums it all up, you know, that, right. that, that quote in itself sums it up and and I've gotten messages and, and and people commented and said like you know I was always so intimidated at skate parks and after seeing this I'm really like excited by it now like I want to go I see it's a family and it was a learning experience for me it was a learning experience for my friend who was really into skating as well he was my second camera operator and he was a bit scared to go skating as well and then after that he eventually got into skating and he, he, he you know so it was just such an organic thing, man. And like every skate park we went to and every interview we got was just like on the spot. We, we, we could have gone to every skate park and no one would have been there. And, right. no, and everyone would have been a dick and that would have been fine because like, who are you? You know, I don't want to be on camera. Where's this going? I understand that. But they weren't. And, and, and yeah, we met a guy called Michael who's like kind of, I may kind of want to, I wanted him to be that center skater of the, of the documentary. And uh, he's a lovely guy, lovely dude. And, um, and he called up a couple of skaters and, and, and arranged for us to go to another skate park and interview them. And like, so like he was like, a, he became a producer in a sense, like after a while, like it's like, it was just such an organic thing, man. And, 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 it, and it, came, it went from something that was just like, I don't, you know, let's just get this done to, it's probably my, one of my best pieces of work. And I'm really happy it's on my portfolio because I'm just so proud of it. Yeah, man. It's fantastic, dude. Just, just that, I, what I like the most about it, it's so raw, right? Mm-hmm. It's so true. And the you you guys are not determining what the skaters are saying, right? You're just kind of like, hey, you know, you ask them a question. It was like it's like a very true documentary of like what London skate, you know what I mean? Because that might be the same perception maybe in the West Coast. Who knows? Because like, but overall, I see like there there's somebody behind uh, there's somebody behind that skate. Board, yeah. right there's something deeper beyond beyond that and you guys did a fantastic job of kind of just showing that there is character behind that these these guys are not bad like what was so cool about one of them um he was talking about trying to hit you know trying to if he didn't make a move there'll be six other skaters telling trying to teach him how to make that move and i was just like to me that reminded me of when i started you know in full like in full cell back in university when we we're doing recording arts if you didn't know how to do it you all would get together and just like you know figure out how to make that sound or how to fix that audio and stuff like that and it was just that whole family of it that bondness of like we are going to do this together is like i think it was just it was it was amazing i did not expect that in the skate world yeah i think that's the thing and also what i'm really proud of we showed that if you think skaters are lazy, then you're absolutely like naive as fuck because they're yeah. probably some of the most hardworking people, if not the most hardworking people I've ever seen. And as Max said, one of the other skaters, he was like, you know, if you fall down, you're gonna, you just have to get back up because there's no, there's no like, you can't troubleshoot that shit. You know, you can't like, you can't, you know, you can't, you know, fix that. You have the, the only way you're going to get better at skating is if you get back up and go again. And you can like put that as a metaphor into so many, you know, in, in, into life completely. You know? Right. That could be a complete ideology for life. Um, but I would think I know why these guys smoke weed. Cause imagine falling. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Uh, 10 sure. feet. <laughs> sure, like, most of them are kind of stoned when they're skating. Cause they have to like, just, it's not because they just want to like get high. It's because they just have to like numb the pain. No <laughs> but, shit. And, but the thing is this, again, it's like, I, and I can't even say that. You know, when I smoke up, I'm like, I'm, I don't, don't talk to me. I don't want to work. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> They're like, I'm on it. It's like, it motivates them even more. It's like, they've just like taken cocaine. It's like, they're just done. They're ready. I'm like, they're pumped, I, man. It's amazing, man. And, and oh yeah. Oh man. It'd be so cool. Like, 
if if you know if I did do anything in the film industry and I got a name for myself, I would love to like in like 20, 35 years, if I had like an exhibition, I'd love to get all the guys back together and like just like kind of do a reunion of, the, of that of that documentary because I I I love that documentary so much. I love everyone in it, and I don't really talk. We don't really talk to the guys anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I see, we all follow each other. We all see what they're up to. Uh, one of the guys does music now, um, but still skating. And they're all just still skating, and it's it's just it's yeah, they're, they're, it's it's lovely, man. Lovely guys, um, and it's just it still blows my mind how like we didn't know them, we didn't plan that, we just met them all on the spot, and it's like the best guys you could have ever met. You know, it's like the best scenario you could have ever had. Right. And um, and that was insane, I think. And and there's a shot in that, and in, 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 uh, it's the beginning shot. But it was one of the shots I shot at the end of the day when we were at South Bank. My friend was like, come on, I want to go home, let's go. I said, like, hey, one more time, I just want to, just want to get this last shot. Mm-hmm. And it was like a skateboard plucked up against the wall. And I wanted to focus port it from the skateboard to the background. And it was just going to be that purely. And I kept fucking it up and I couldn't really get it. And I was like there for a minute. And this guy was like waiting to get like get a skateboard back. And I was like, no, just wait, just wait. Just like, <laughs> leave it a second. So we get the shot and he's like, okay, cool. So like I'm just pulling it, focus pulling it, keep fucking it up, and then I finally get it. And the second I pull focus from the skateboard to to the background, this kid walks into the frame and he picks up his skateboard. And I go, fantastic. And I didn't clock it in, in the moment. And then when I was looking back at the rushes and uh, when I was editing, I was like, wow. Like that is just, there is so much symbolism in that. You know, that whole like, the skater behind the board and it's like a frame inside of a frame kind of shot you know he's like and it's perfect like he is in frame of not just my camera but in the skateboard itself oh, wow. that are at the skateboard and it's just like that and that was not planned again so it's just it really sums it up and you, and you have an experience like that you shoot something like that and in the art and you, you probably felt a lot of doubt you know, in the past, like, am I doing the right thing? Is music, should I really keep pursuing this? It's like, it's uncertain, it's rough. And, you know, everyone feels that. But once you, once you complete a project like that and it goes so well and it wasn't planned and it's just like, it's just smooth, you think, maybe someone is looking over me. Maybe this is meant to be. Maybe this right. is meant to be. Do you and sometimes get, get all spiritual about it? You're kind of like, mm-hmm. Kind of in a sense, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not religious, but uh, I do kind of believe in manifestation. I don't want to sound like an L.A., LA bitch right now. <laughs> I feel that there's a third body inside me. <laughs> I, I, uh, I do in a sense. And, and when you have moments like that, you think, wow, yeah, okay. Because not everyone is like, you know, most of the time, 99% of the time, you, 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 it's going to flop if you don't plan it. Um, and then you have the mute, and then, and then, and then, yeah, everything else I've made after that. There's been ups and downs, of course, and there were ups and downs in, the, in that skate blocker as well. Mm-hmm. But each time something just does go well, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's just another, like something is, you know, this it, something's meant to be here, I think. And the music video, again, is just another project that highlights that, you know, it's, it's like I had no crew and then in the space of a week and a half, I had a crew and and, and they were, they were, again, once again, like some of the best people I could have asked for. And I, I want to work with Coco again. We're already planning another music video shoot soon. Um, but, but that's the, but that's the thing, man. You got to keep going. That's the thing. A lot of people would stop and be like, be hesitant to go to the st- skate park. Imagine if you were so scared that you, you, you had that perception of skaters. You're like, I've always wanted to skate you know, film a skate, you know, go have that visionary of beyond the yeah. skateboard. Right. But if you're too fucking scared, you know, that would never happen. And that's the thing is a lot of people, at least, you know, in your status or your, 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 your position, they'd be scared. They'd be like, man, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to do it. I'll just do uh, a simple documentary from in the library, you know, not to trash the library, but, but you yeah. did, you had the balls to be like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, I'm going to do it. And I'm yeah. just going to shoot it. So it's like, you you know, I just say, man, just fucking keep going. Because I looked at the other shit that like, uh, the other one I was looking at, it was the the complications of infatuation, which I really thought it was a really, really cool um, kind of co- like dramedy, right? And um, it was just really just interesting of like, 
piecing everything together. My favorite part was the shower scene when <laughs> she's like, she's like, how long have you been showering like cold showers? She's like, I don't know. And then you just, you pan it to him and he's just like, no motion. He's just like, like a serial killer looking guy. <laughs> yeah. And then I don't know that, 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 that film, that film annoys me. I mean, I'm really proud of it and I love everyone in it. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 I'm really, I, I think, I think it does have something going for it, but it's, I mean, for a first short, it's great. I'm really happy with it. But what did know you the most about it? Just like how everything was. I think, I think it was my first time writing and I co-wrote it with a friend of mine. And uh, I think, I mean, what we wanted to do is we demonstrate like this main character, which is, I think is the third character in everyone's, in, in, in any relationship, which is silent. So we wanted to demonstrate that. And I don't know, I, I think you need, you obviously you need like ultimate sound design experts on, on if you want to achieve something like that. Mm -hmm. I think we did to a certain extent, but I think it's missing to, I think it's missing two solid like dialogue heavy scenes. Like you have like scene 11, which is when they're in the bedroom talking about the stir fry and how the Simon dies, you know. Um, spoiler, but you know you're probably not going to watch it anyway. But, um, <laughs> Please go watch it, guys. He's he's yeah. just being very humble. No, I, it, it's a it's a fantastic because there was real dialogue in it, and and you see that them acting really well. But everything else is a bit more just like mundane, and I understand what we're trying to do there, but it, it felt like it was losing. It, it, if it had two real depthful scenes, like mm -hmm. real someone like that then, then it would be great i mean my friend summed it up after he watched it. he said uh a lot of complications and not much infatuation i Ooh. think that sums it up quite well that's but I'm, again i'm proud of it i love i love how it looks it's really well shot and, and and i really like it's a pretty film in that sense but uh the writing i'm kind of annoyed by it. but again it's gonna if it was perfect then you know i would stop there so you're yeah. gonna have that with every project man honestly even the big people they release you know a film and it, you know, let's say, give it, give, give a big director, you know, Steven Spielberg, you know, they'll still trash his shit. You know what I mean? Regardless of Steven Spielberg, you know what I mean? It's just not everything's a good gem, but if you just try it, you go for it, you know, you risk everything for it. At the end of the day, you're making art and art's so yeah. subjective. You know what I mean? There's some, there is some quite arty scenes. I mean, I recently found out it won best film at my college and I wasn't, I didn't even know. And they wrote an article on it and they liked it a lot. And I was like, they're, like, they're trying to use it as like kind of like the marketing for new students. And I was like, oh, like I was quite, I was really honored by that. And I was like, mm -hmm. that's very, but well, I wish it could have been something that I thought was the best. Cause again, it comes from like, if people love it, then I'm really happy. But right. if I don't, I mean, I don't I'm not happy with it. Um, but I think one thing it does do really well is it shows where the director's mind is, where my mind is at, what, what I want to try and do, what I want to try and make. And I think for that, then that's what like everyone's first short film should really do. They should, it should always try to portray what you, the direction you want to go and what you really want to make and the new style you want to bring. If you look at like Edgar Wright's early stuff, then like, you know, you obviously see the like how we went from that to like Baby Driver and yeah. Sean and the new film that's coming out called Late Night in Soho or well, Last Night in Soho, um, something like that. Um, with his quick transitions and his like comedic direction, and you can see what he's doing in his early stuff. And I think like you can see that with this work and and Skate Doco too and music video. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm happy with it, but I'm not in a sense. No, I, I feel you. I, I get that with songs too. Like even, I, I'll even say chess game. Chess game, I wasn't, I was really happy how it turned out, right? But I was like, man, there's, it needs something else. It needs something else. And that's, I think that's, that's just an artist in general. You feel like your work is never perfect and it will never be. And that's the thing. It's like hard to accept that it will never become perfect in anybody's eyes. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, it's what Hans Zimmer said. He said like, you know, why the reason what keeps me waking and this guy's like a multi millionaire, he's established, he's everything, he's hands in on that. But he says, you know, I don't I don't think I've ever made a perfect piece. Um and 
and that's what keeps him waking up in the morning. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's complete, that's fact, you know, that's why it's the same for me, it's probably the same for you. And, but again, like, I think every masterpiece should have some flaws in it. There, there should always be, like the Beatles, when they made uh, A Day in a Life, he walks into the, Paul walks into the studio and the producer said, um, hey, Paul, do, do, do you not want to go again? Like, you know, uh, Paul, Paul was happy with it. He's like, hey, you know, don't you want to go again? Like there's, you know, I, th I, I, can hear, I can hear two mistakes in there. He goes, two, there's three. Yeah, let's leave it. That's fine. You know, and I, I, I like that a lot. I like that. I like that story a lot. Because first, the guy didn't clock there was three mistakes. And then also, he's happy with the mistakes. And there should always be some sort of a flaw to whatever you're, whatever you're working on. Um, because it's not realistic in that sense. If it is a perfect piece, if art is not perfect, if it is a perfect piece, then technically it's not, like, in a sense, relatable. Which I think art should right. be in a certain extent um because it should make you evoke emotion you know if you if you're watching a film you just feel like an alien towards that towards what the film's narrative is and you're, you're not going to feel any emotion um so there should be mistakes to it in a sense if that makes sense I don't know. no know. i think so the imperfections make it a character itself you know like i think they were talking about um actually there's another another beatles um i forgot which track it was but it was the janitor was knocking on the the one of the I think one of the studio doors and they got it on the recording and they're like oh shit we got the janitor on the recording and they're like no leave it this is fantastic it's awesome um, and it's just there's so many stories of that even in film there's so many stories of that perfect like with that skater guy that guy picked up this board but it was like it was an accidental what, what we like almost like accidental perfection right. Like it ha happened accidentally, but it turned out really well. So it's like that, yeah. you know, those things, I feel like those things give me chills. I'm just like, oh my God, we got it. But so it's like the subconscious is kind of more powerful than the consciousness. It's like something that's already been planned that you didn't know, of, you know, again, like kind of Carl Jung-esque kind of vibe. Like, <laughs> but like, like, you know, the subconscious is, you know, yeah, I actually did plan for you to pull focus on that moment. So, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just like, there's like, I, I don't know where to describe those kind of things, but they are great. And, and, and sometimes you have to think is, is someone behind me? Is someone looking over me? You know, this, this is weird. Right. It, it's like goosebumps and kind of like, yeah. you know, I'll take credit for it, but I didn't mean to do that. And I think that's kind of cool. And I like that a lot. And I think that comes with art, man. It's like, I think when you do try to make it too perfect, it's going to fuck up. You know, for sure and it has to it kind of yeah. has to you know what i mean there's no the world is not perfect so why do you think you're gonna have a perfect time you know there's there's always like a a great experience right that everything plans out but not everything plans out perfectly it's like it just it worked out at timings and stuff there was might be a little bit something that fucked up but it you know it looked good it still turned out well so it's like technically that was there was a fuck up actually in the music, but I think it looks great, and my, and my DP hates it. <laughs> but uh -huh. I was like, I think it looks great, and it's when uh, Joe comes in. It's the second shot. Joe comes in to the party, notices the girl, and we whip pan to her. I love it. I think it looks so smooth. Yeah, I thought it was cool. And she and she's in focus and everything because Coco was like very precise about that. And and he's like, nah, I hate it. And I was like, nah, it works. He's like, no, but it's not good. It's not perfect. And I was like man like it's not meant to be like it, it like to a certain extent you have to there, there, there is a like i kind of turned it into like some kind of symbolism <laughs> which i always do I'm like, <laughs> like, actually technically i like how it is handheld and a bit you know broken and, and rudged because that's how joe feels because he's he's starstruck by this girl so the camera you know uh, uh translates that <laughs> you know i don't know but um but that's like yeah i don't know like i i i think when i first started editing I was so perfectionistic and like everything had to be perfect. And, and, and like, you know, I, I was doing stuff, I was correcting stuff that no one was going to see or hear, yeah. you know, never. I was only going to do it. And then after a while, when I put it out a week later, I wouldn't care. I would be onto the next thing. And now I think after doing all of that, I've got to the point now where I'm like, I'm a bit more laid back. I'm a bit more like, okay, if I'm really happy with that and it is solid and there is like actually like no proper mistakes, but there is like a few little things that are just kind of sometimes out of your control. It's okay. You know, it's just like, 
it's life you know just relax you know, yeah it's gonna, it's just don't bad. overthink shit that's the thing you you when you're in the mode you sometimes overthink stuff and that's when you start fucking up worse when you listen to something or you watch something multiple 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 times you're just gonna start to hate it you just have you have to understand that like maybe taking a step back and waiting a little while and not looking at that or listening to it for a while and having and then bringing a fresh pair of ears and eyes to it is actually going to benefit it more than just stay staying with it and trying to fix that problem have you ever been too emotionally invested into a project i mean i think every project's like that man uh i'm always emotionally invested into it but um yeah i think every project is is make or break for me i think um I guess if it's like, I mean, more like in the dark side, like you're like, you're like, like I've been like, there's been projects that, you know, I, some songs I made, it remind me of somebody that I miss and I've, I've gone to like, you know, dark thoughts of my head. I'm just like, geez. Um, Well, no, no, not to that extent where I, 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 it's sparked a memory and I'm going, and I, I've caught some I guess for me in the sense of like I'm so emotionally invested in a project that when it's done I'm happy for two days and then I go down this like I have this like massive calm down and I'm like quite like just exhausted and a bit unhappy that I have now nothing else to focus on and that's why like, I'm for me I'm like a four-day kind of guy so like after four days I'm like I need to do the next thing I can't really I don't like I love doing nothing but I love doing something at the same time and and when I when I'm lazy for like four or five days doing nothing and not thinking about working on anything with not with no deadline to hit, I just become very itchy and I need to start doing something because I start judging myself. My alter ego is like, man, you're you're fucking up. You're you know you're failing. You're not doing something. You need to get get on it now. Do something. And I guess that's like after I like because I didn't think that I wasn't gonna touch the music video for like like a week. <laughs> I was like exhausted. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, I'm not touching that. I'm not going to edit it for a week. I've, I've stayed up like back to back to 7 a.m. shooting this from, from Saturday to, to Monday morning. I'm not touching. And then for some reason that night, I kind of, I had like a bath and I, I uh, getting back from Joe's, I got out and I, you know, I just kind of recouped myself. And I went for a walk and I felt quite sad for some reason. I guess I was also really exhausted. But I just felt quite emotionally drained. And I was walking and then I was listening to, uh, I love Tay Impala, so I was listening to Tay Impala. And, uh, and yeah, they just, could get you in the dark, <laughs> get you in the yeah, dark. <laughs> I was like, I need to edit this tomorrow. <clears throat> and, uh, and it took a day and a half to edit. And that's very rare for me in the sense, like I procrastinate a lot, uh, <laughs> but I also get it done, but I do procrastinate. And, and, I just, I feel I'm more perfectionistic with a project. Well, the skate docker for me took about a week and a half because I just wanted to perfect it. I wanted it to be so perfect. That's like the last, I guess that's the last kind of like real, like everything has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. everything. Like I don't want to look at this and watch it in two weeks time knowing it's out and people else have watched it and I've spot a mistake that I could have avoided. I don't want to do that. And I was like, I was so focused on that. And since then, I've been a bit more kind of calm. And then after I finished the music video, and did that in a day off, I was like, what do I do now? You know, I was like, damn, that was really fast. And then we graded it. And I was like, cool, now what do I do now? And then I did like nothing for three or four days. And then I met a friend of mine's uh, girlfriend who wants to shoot a music video. And now I'm just listening on that. And I just want to do that now. And I've got the treatment done for that. And I'm in a meeting with her tomorrow. And I just, I'm on to the next thing. I just want to do it. And for some reason, I've just found a lot of motivation after doing this music video. Usually after a project, I don't want to touch it. Like I feel a bit more, um, I feel like I feel validated to just be lazy. Right. Now, more than ever, I'm like, I want to, let's get something going. That's like, this could be something like I, like I could, I'm, I'm actually quite happy to do music videos for a while now. I really like the format to it and I really like the formula to it. I think I'm okay at it. And I have a guy with me who is very good. And I think we could, yeah, I'm quite excited about the direction we could take this in. You have to, man. 
you have to keep going because it, it just was it was just it, fantastic just just hearing from everybody else talking about how you worked it was just like man this you know and just seeing your other works it was just like you know you have that ability to form a really good project from you know whether it's you know dramedy to a serious documentary to a music video you have your you have that talent to construct everything and you just gotta i just can't wait for your other music videos and just your other work i'm just a big fan marcus and just, man i'm just uh i'm just thankful yeah I'm just thankful to have you as part of the team and just as a friend in general because i can see that not only you have passion for your film but you have passion just for music culture and it's just you know we just need more more people like that just to be you know they just like they love everything and they not that they have to love everything but they acknowledge everything and they you you kind of respect everything just like oh that's that culture and you're interested about stuff and that's even out of your realm but you really you want to make the light of that make sure you know show other people that this is there and you maybe you've never discussed you know discovered it or just acknowledge it but it's there and here's a piece of that so i'm just yeah i just i'm thankful that you took the time off to join this podcast so 